Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. I hope life is treating you well, and thank you for watching this clip on domain range and graph of irrational functions. This function is a really interesting one. First of all, domain is pretty easy. Domain is what x can be, what x can be. Well, for our case, x can be anything except 3, because this will make the denominator zero. Okay, so that's a pretty easy one. Now to find a range, it's a more interesting one. The best way to find the range, of course, is to graph it. Now in order to graph it, there's a couple steps. So I figure in this little clip, we'll focus on the graphing, because graph will tell you everything you need to do. Uh, that's uh, graphing a a rational equation can be tedious, but it doesn't have to be mind-boggling hard. Okay, so what I want to do is give you a three-step process that you can follow for any rational equations you want to find. Number one, you find the holes, which is, of course, our domain. Okay, so x cannot be equal to 3. And the number two, what you want to do is to say if the rational, or if the function, let's just call the function, is what I call head heavy. Okay, this one, head heavy or not, it's going to help you to find what number three is the asymptotes. Okay, so basically step two and three is related. Now let's talk about what this head heavy is. 2x plus 1, x plus uh, minus 3 here. A head heavy is when the power of the numerator for the uh, function for the variable matches the bottom, or you, if it's actually even uh, higher. Okay, so think of this one as a person. The power, if it matches or greater, then it's head heavy tips over. And then if it's head heavy, then you use long division. It sounds tedious, but it's not. Okay, the reason we're going to use long division, you'll see in a minute, is, is this. Okay, I'm going to put a 2 here. So it's a 2x minus 6. Since we're subtracting, I have a remainder of 7. Okay. So basically, this function, f of x, with 2x plus 1 on top divided by minus 3, is really equal to constant 2 plus remainder of 7 divided by minus 3. Now from here, you can see that this form gives you a really good view on how to find horizontal asymptotes. As x approaches to positive infinity, you can see this chunk goes to 0. So f of x is approaching to positive 2 on the plus side. Because x is, let's say, 10,000. 10,000 minus 3 and on the denominator divided by 7. So it's a little bit bigger than 2. Okay, so this little plus sign. As x approaches to ne negative infinity, this is how we find the asymptotes. Okay, x is going to be approach 2, but it's on the minus side. Okay, so combine 2 and 3 gives the horizontal asymptotes. Okay, combine step 1 and giving the holes, what we can do is actually find out the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so now combine the information we found in step one, and in step two and three, we have a pretty good idea how this graph is going to look. Okay, so how this line is not as straight as I want it to be, so bear with me here. X cannot be three. Let's dot it over here. So this is where our hole is. Okay. And then X gets to be positive. Here's another asymptotes. This is the horizontal asymptotes. This is the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so earlier we found that f of x close to 2 on the positive side if x goes to a positive infinity. So I'm going to draw a little error here to symbolize that. So as x gets bigger and bigger, my y value or f of x is closer to 2, but it's a little bigger. Okay, if it gets to negative, infinity, then it's a little bit below loop 2, but it can never reach 2. So there, there's a hint for the domain, uh, for the range. Okay, next thing we're going to do, since we know x cannot equal to positive 3, we're going to see 
or explore what happens to a function of fx if two things. Okay, if x is a little bit less than that, and what happens if x is a little bit bigger than that? Okay, since we had the function in a different form, which is actually easier to see, function is 2 plus 7x minus 3. When x is 2.9, this chunk is negative. Okay. And it's a pretty big negative number. Okay, so that's there for where this little downward arrow comes in because this x equal to 3. If x is 2.9, I have a really huge negative number that's down here. And if x is 3.1, I have a huge positive number. And that's where my arrow goes there. And then all you have to do is really collect connecting those points together. Okay, I have to tell you that I found that this special interest point is when x equal to 0, I have a y is equal to minus 1 third. That's why it's crossed this y-axis here. And the other branch of curve is right over here. Okay, here's our graph of the function. It doesn't look as pretty, but hey, the process works. Okay, so to sum it up, the range, of course, for this function is range cannot be equal to 2. It's going to ever get closer on the negative side or a positive side, but it never gets there. Um, here's the range. Here's the domain. Domain is x cannot be equal to 3. Okay, and then the graph looks like this. All right, I hope that this one is clear. Uh, like I said, it's, it doesn't have to be a hard problem for us. And if you have a systematic way to approach it, it, it the things should be easy for you. Okay, once again from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pam making learning math fun and easy. Well, at least trying to. Please comment or thumb up the video, thumb up if the video has been helpful. Until next time, have a confident day.